Morning, the entrance antiphon for Mass in honor of St. Martin the First. Perpetual light will shine on your saints, O Lord, and life without end forever. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may withstand the trials of this world with invincible firmness of purpose, just as you did not allow your martyr Pope, St. Martin I, to be daunted by threats or broken by suffering. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to, to need. Thus, Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then he brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. 
Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this? Amen, amen, I say to you. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. I tell you about earthly things, and you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Gospel of the Lord. They had everything in common. This is one of the outstanding features of what's called the apostolic life. The early church, the very early church, seemed to be living in a way that everyone offered their property to the good of the community. And it was, as this paragraph from the Acts of the Apostles describes, given out in common. It was held in common and given to each according to his need. There was no needy person among them, etc. Now, why was this? Why did, why did the apostles live this way? It seems that they were living this way in imitation of Christ, who lived this way. He was poor. He had nothing of his own. He had no possessions. He had no place to rest his head, as he says in one place. He had no wife. He had no children. He died almost alone and was buried in another man's tomb. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And so the apostles lived this way in imitation of him. Even from their call, they left everything and followed him. They left their nets, they left their fathers, they left everything to follow him. And so even their first followers also seemed to be living in this way, giving up everything to follow them. Now the question might be, what was the point of this? And there's a clue hidden right in this paragraph. The whole paragraph is about this poverty of the community, that everything was in common. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. There was no needy person among them. Those who owned property would sell it and bring the proceeds of the sale and put it at the feet of the, the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Right in the middle of this paragraph is inserted the line, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, which seems to be not part of this theme. But that's exactly the purpose of this theme. Why did they live this way? In order to bear witness to the resurrection. And the reason for this is that the resurrection is a purely heavenly phenomenon. It is purely spiritual. It is that which comes from above. The earth does not have it. It doesn't own it. It doesn't understand it. It comes from God who's in heaven. And so we have to live the life of the one who came down from heaven if we want to share in the life of the one who goes up to heaven. The only ones who know about the life of heaven are those who live in accord with this, which is why the apostolic life of this kind of poverty, at least poverty of spirit, detachment from earthly things, is essential for all Christians. It's not just for the apostles. It's for all of us. The church has said from the very beginning that we must be detached from worldly things. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to sell everything you have and give it to the poor, although some do. That is for some, but it's not necessary for all. What is necessary for all is this detachment of spirit, having things but not being governed by them. Of course, you have practical necessities. You've got jobs and cars and houses and families that you need to take care of, and that's right and reasonable and appropriate. You don't need to think that you're living a kind of second-class Christian life because of this. But you do need to be detached from these things, not let them rule over you. This is why fasting as a regular part of the Christian life is a good thing, because it helps to make sure that these things that are good in themselves are not ruling over me, that I am the master of these created things, putting them at the service of Almighty God and at the service of the salvation of my soul. Now, one final thing. There are those who are called to this life. We call it the apostolic life, in fact. And it is lived according to poverty, 
not having any possessions of my own, and chastity, not having a spouse or children, giving up the goods of married life for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, and obedience, putting myself at the will of another in order to serve God. This is the religious life. It's lived by those in convents and monasteries. And as I say, it's not for everyone, but there is a particular reason that it is an exalted form of the Christian life, because it bears witness better than any other way of living here on this earth to the reality of heaven. The people, men and women who live this apostolic life, tell the world, they demonstrate in their very lives that heaven is real, that the power of God lives in me. Look, the world, I've given up the world. I've given up the life of this world and I'm still alive and I'm joyful. I'm filled with power that comes only from God. This is why the church has promoted the apostolic, the religious life from early days. There were already monks in the desert in communities by the second century. And so I say this not because I expect all or many or even any of you here in this church to follow that apostolic life, but so that you can know what great dignity it is and promote it yourselves for your children and grandchildren. This is important because we need vocations to this apostolic life in order to demonstrate to the world that heaven is real, bearing witness to the resurrection as the apostles did. And even if you yourselves are not called to it, you may know those who are. And in this way, you will help build up the whole body of Christ because all the parts serve each other. And in this way, we will all bear witness to the resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. With confidence in our Heavenly Father, let us present him our petitions. That our church throughout the world may grow into a true communion of all of God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. For our political and civic leaders, that they may not abuse their positions of trust for personal or political gain, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Those crushed by an overwhelming sense of their own sinfulness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Those experiencing physical or mental sufferings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, who have demonstrated the life of heaven in the resurrection of Christ, your Son, hear our prayers and grant us what is in accord with your will, through the same Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Grant. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr Martin I, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim... Holy holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, end on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took, the precious, he put, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Let us kneel as we gather together to honor our mother and our perpetual help. We recall how she helped others. Her whole life was a lesson in love. Mother, your picture tells us so much about you. It reminds us to reach out and help those in need. Help us understand that our lives belong to others as much as they belong to us. Christian love, we know we cannot heal every ill. Problem. But with God's grace, we intend to do what we can. May we be true witnesses to the world that love for one another really matters. Action is proclaimed. Other perpetual help. Mary, you were a woman of steadfast faith. Your faith in Jesus never wavered. Model of all believers, pray to the Holy Spirit for us. Help us not only to accept all your son teaches us, but to put that teaching into practice. Comfort and reassurance. You did not see him as only a frail child. Moved by the Holy Spirit, you accepted Jesus as the son of the most high, the long awaited Messiah. Ample of faith, help us recognize Jesus and those we meet. And the elderly. Our brothers and sisters, we do to your loving Son. May his words live in our hearts and influence our lives. Let us pray to be open to God's word. Mary, woman of faith. Listen to God's word message. May the Holy Spirit enlighten our understanding and give us the courage to put these words into practice. Let us stand as we present our own petitions. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Mitchell, our priest, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Amen. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick, especially those of our families and parish, to regain their health according to your holy will. Amen. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased, 
especially those of our families in our parish, and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own personal petitions to our mother of perpetual help. Let us kneel as we continue our prayers. Mary, humble handmaid of the Lord, we need your example today to discover God's will in our lives. Her life, word, and all that we do. Fiction that nothing is more important than doing the will of our Heavenly Father. May we spend each moment in loving and pleasing Him. Mother Perpetual Help, your picture reminds us that we are to carry our cross as Jesus did. With courage, he endured injustice, abandonment and betrayal, pain and suffering, even a criminal's death. Death. Now you share in his resurrection. We and someday like you, help us be patient in our suffering. Suffering sickness in mind or body, experience your son's healing power. Help us follow his example, and through him, with him, and in him, commend ourselves. Let us ask Mary to watch over all families, mother of perpetual help. Husbands and wives ever closer together. always be models of a Christian life. Help all children that they may love and respect their parents. Inspire all people to value Christian marriage and family life. Give us a sense of responsibility that we may do our part in making our homes havens of love and peace. Marry our model, help every family grow daily in genuine love for God and neighbor so that justice and peace may from the first moment of her existence, the Holy Spirit filled Mary with his love. By his power, she became the Virgin Mother of God. Through the same Holy Spirit, she became the perfect wife, the perfect mother. Let us imitate her generosity, her openness to the Holy Spirit, and say, Receive the Holy Spirit. May he be with us to strengthen us above us to protect us, before us to lead us, behind us to encourage us, within us to possess us totally. Through the prayers of our holy patron, St. Alphonsus, through the intercession of our mother of perpetual help, through the merits of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, present in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain forever. Thank you.